Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Going to have a fantastic little webinar today. Uh, we're going to be welcoming back Amanda back from, you know, in case you are like us, a big fan of her webinars. Uh, she was having her maternity leave for a bit, and we gave her a break from webinars for quite a while. And uh, she's back in action, and, and this is going to be great. We were just going over it earlier. It looks fantastic. So I hope you're ready. Um, I just have a couple super quick housekeeping items, um, primarily uh, the, the Q&A button there at the bottom. So I would recommend go ahead and click that now, uh, get that little question and answer box, you know, so it doesn't get in your way, you know, but you want to have that up so it's easier for you to type a question to us. I'm sure there's going to be a lot. We are here and live, so we're ready to answer those questions. But note, you'll also be able to see the answers that we type to other people's questions. So it just makes a fun little interactive companion to this webinar. This is not a recording, even though it is being recorded. <laughs> if you can watch this in the future, you're like, wait a minute, I am watching the recording. I don't know, I'm babbling. Uh, too many donuts this morning. It was a donut Friday. Hope that's okay. Hey, uh, let's rock and roll here. Uh, hey, Amanda, let's take it away. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, Jer. Um, this, uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, uh, like Jer said, I'm Amanda Moran. I'm a landscape architect. I'm uh, working in development and training here at, oops, yep, at Land FX. And uh, now I'm a mom of twin girls. <laughs> so 2020 was a wild year. I'm really happy it's 2021. And it's great to be back here and doing another webinar with all of you. So today we are going to do, here's me, a technical deep dive into how to actually draft out a planted vertical wall planter or living wall, also called the living wall, uh, into construction plans to give to a contractor. Uh, so you can see the outline here for those of you who came for uh, a little bit of tips on how to actually design a vertical planter or a living wall. We will, I will be offering some of these. It is going to be very general uh, because uh, today we're going to go through a simple example to fully show the workflow. But understand that you can extrapolate this small design that I'm going to do today in CAD into a massive wall as well. I just wanted to keep it simple so that uh, when you uh, rewatch this webinar uh, or you're watching right now, you can kind of follow along a little bit. And I, I do want to say I'm not an expert on every vertical wall system out there. Absolutely not. Uh, but I am an expert on CAD and land effects workflows to get it drafted. So that is the main focus today. Uh, there really are multiple ways to do a lot of what we're going to cover. This is one suggestion. So if you have kind of uh, what if I do this instead questions, put those in the Q&A box and we can discuss alternative methods at the end and also cover all of your questions. So I'm pretty excited about this. We're going to cover a little bit about design to, to get your feet wet, uh, but then really focus on that. Okay, I've got this, uh, the planting design done. How do I actually communicate it so it gets built? Uh, and we're going to cover a little bit of irrigation as well, because vertical planters almost always need irrigation in order to survive. So, First off, let's go with uh, through some tips for design and choosing a type of planter. So first, you should always do an analysis of the space where each wall is going to be, not just the site as a whole, but also uh, where you plan to put each wall and its orientation. So uh, is it oriented north, south, east, west? Because the way that it's facing is really going to affect the sun uh, and exposure to determine what kinds of plant species you're going to uh, going to pick. 
And if it's a very tall or long area like this or all the way across this wall, you can see it gets really, really sunny and probably hot over here. And it gets really, really shady and probably a little cooler down here. So you're going to have different species spanning across this wall to get the best success out of your design. Consider the microclimate of this wall. Um, for instance, if it's next to this building, this building's probably heated. So you can bump up and choose uh, a higher hardiness zone, most likely, uh, and that will likely survive, giving you more opportunity for more tropical plants. Uh, but if this wall is actually exposed, uh, maybe it's a prominently north wind in this area and it's facing north, uh, then you're probably going to get a lot of uh, bitter, if, 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 if it's up north, maybe where it freezes, a lot more bone chilling wind hitting it, in which case you got to size back down again and not necessarily account for the heat coming from wall. So there's a lot of things to juggle there in terms of figuring out your microclimate that you can really figure out by going on site and standing where you want to put the planter on your site. Consider things like um, humidity in the in your area in general to decide what plants you're going to choose but also water exposure for the exact spot of each wall for instance this building right here has an overhang over it so obviously when it rains uh, you are going to actually get a lot less water on here so this system up this wall is absolutely going to need an irrigation system to account for that but maybe you're doing a vertical planter that's in an open space and it's kind of acting as a wall between two different seating areas uh, in a wide open space in that case that vertical planter will actually get hit by the rain so you might be able to um, size down on what you choose in terms of your say drip emitters for an irrigation system you can uh, or lessen the frequency of how often it needs to water make sure that you have a um, a rain gauge uh, anything like that these are all considerations to take uh, for your entire system also uh, is the space where you're going to put this is it strong enough for the system that you are proposing to put there a lot of uh, manufactured systems might need anchoring support. Uh, can, are you allowed to anchor to this wall or do you need to make it more like a curtain freestanding system beside the wall? Uh, how's that going to affect the wall itself? You need to start to consider all of these things when you're uh, as you're designing which system to choose. Uh, definitely talk to the manufacturer representatives on um, their considerations for their wall in the space that you're going to choose as well. They're going to be a really good wealth of information for you. So uh, choose, I would say, kind of research and choose a, a planter wall system that has had past success in your area, if possible. Uh, I cannot recommend enough going to see a wall that's been built for more at least more than three years at least three years because then you're going to see uh, what might have failed from the initial design uh, and what definitely succeeded and you're going to be able to learn from that and um, implement it in your own design and be more successful yourself I, and I'm mostly saying this uh, it's but because probably everybody watching this webinar is trying to dive into this and maybe hasn't done this before. So uh, we actually do have, a, if you want more of a deep dive into a particular system, we do have a webinar uh, that you can watch after this by Filtrex. We have a guest webinar by them. You can have a look at that system uh, to determine or get more information on that particular system. But if you're going for maybe a different one, uh, talk to the rep, find out where one is near you and go visit it. And maybe even talk to the people who uh, live or work where that wall is and ask them about it. How's the maintenance? Uh, get some tips off of them and just learn off of that on what's successful. Plan for your maintenance of the wall. Pests can be an issue. So put that into your final notes for your construction plan. Uh, 
uh, on how to deal with the pests for the plants that you might have chosen, as well as uh, try and figure out a way or a maintenance plan for adding back nutrients into the wall. So if you have an irrigation system, how to add that, those nutrients so that uh, the wall can be successful after you're done with it. And it's onto your client's hands. Also take note of the plant soil needs. So if you have succulents and ferns on the same wall, succulents need really high drainage. They do not like sitting in water, whereas ferns like a really moist environment and a lot of water. So you might actually end up having different soils in different pots if you have, say, a pot uh, structure type of vertical wall. So keep that into account. We won't be going too much into soil and planning for that today uh, in our final, but uh, do keep that in mind as you go through this and build off of this webinar to be able to actually design your planters. Also keep in mind, um, you can increase the drainage in a planter with gravel, but that will absolutely add a lot of weight. So again, figure out your support structure and what's possible, but take that into account. So let's look at types of vertical planters. Generally, uh, we're looking at the living walls section where it's a lot of uh, using pots or trenches. Uh, that's one type. Uh, it's kind of staggered, uh, holding up all sorts of different plants. And it might be part of a retaining wall, like you see here, there's different pockets. Um, or it might be what we're actually focusing today in our example is this wall in particular, where it has uh, these pots here. And just so you know, I'm not representing any of these manufacturers uh, or recommending them or anything. Definitely do your own research on how they perform in your area and for your own site. But I'm just doing these as an example of uh, to how you get to the end result. But you can plug and play any system. Uh, there's also living walls uh, can come as geotextile felts or panels that support the soil and uh, the plants in here. So you have little holes in here where the plant goes in and it's basically a whole wall of soil uh, kind of just rotated up vertically and supported by that geotextile and maybe also a wire mesh grid. We won't be covering this style today, but that is a style. We also won't be covering this, although it can end up looking very similar. It does have limited species available because it's all vines and that's green facades, vines and trailing plant, trailing shrubs. Uh, they are kind of also uh, referred to sometimes as living walls or vertical planters because uh, the green goes vertically along the, the building, but that's not what we're talking about today. I did wanna just point that out. Um, that this is another type of style. Okay, let's look at some actually established manufacturers of vertical planters. There are a lot. This is not an exhaustive list. <laughs> and again, we don't represent any of these. Um, I'm just giving you the information so you could start maybe Googling each one of these and seeing, oh, this might actually work in the application I'm thinking of in particular. Uh, for the design I want to do. And you can see uh, all the possibilities in here, all the different styles, big trenches, little pockets. Um, this is the, the pot style, but planted really extensively. So uh, go through all of these. Um, this is again Filtrex, the one with the uh, webinar that we have that you can have a look at and uh, remind me and I'll pull that up at the end to show you where it is. And we'll be working with LiveWall today. But I've also heard really good things about Turnasol in particular. Um, that's actually what sparked this webinar uh, was somebody asking about how to design, how to actually draw it, the, that system into CAD with land effects. Okay, let's look at popular plants. Uh, there are thousands <laughs> that you can choose from. Here are some that you can look into that have had past successes on other walls. Again, it really depends on your orientation, where you are in the world, 
what you want this for. Do you want it to be an edible wall? Do you want it to be more tropical? Um, or do you want it to survive in a cold climate? Is it indoors? Um, all of that will determine what plants you end up using. But uh, go ahead and try uh, kind of research into these a bit more. These are just some examples of what you can use. Uh, generally, you will want to try and find plants that tend to have shallow root systems, though, because obviously in the potted system that we're, use, we're having as an example today, uh, the roots can't go very far and you don't want to suffocate the plant over the course of 10 years. That's again, like looking at a planter that's three years old, the roots will finally hit the, the edge. Uh, so have a look at that. Um, probably I would say with the geotextile style, uh, the roots have a bit more leeway because the soil is um, not limited by a certain section. It can, the roots could keep going through and connect. So you might be a little bit uh, freer with the plants that you choose on that. So that's everything that I wanted to cover on considerations for when you actually design your living wall or vertical planters. Now let's go into once you've done the planting design, how to actually put this together in CAD using land effects and counting it up, running schedules, making sure everything's going to work. We're going to go through our planting plan as well as using details, our planting tools and detail tools. Um, I won't list all of this out, but uh, if you watch, uh, you can kind of take a screenshot if you want to follow along with. Uh, if you're watching the recording, uh, you can pause here and also take a screenshot. But as you can see, we're going through step by step everything that we're going to cover. And then at the end, we're going to do an irrigation plan, which is very uh, a very special workflow. It's very similar. We have a power tip on uh, designing an irrigation plan for um, green roofs. And it's kind of similar, but uses a lot more caps in this uh, in this plan. And it's all in one drawing as opposed to that, um, that rooftop design. Uh, you can combine this workflow with a rooftop design. You'll just have to, of course, do this workflow and then the, work, the rooftop design workflow on top of it to combine everything together. But it's absolutely possible. And then once you get used to it, it's actually pretty easy. So let's dive into it. Perfect. So here I am in CAD. And uh, obviously, I'm showing you the ideal that we're getting towards. Uh, if you if you've done a landscape plan in land effects before or a planting plan at all, just regular on the site, you're going to be placing your blocks, you're going to be placing your hatches, you're going to be calling it out, and you're going to get a schedule. Uh, and you might call out some details, all of this. But once it comes to a wall planter, like I have shown here, it gets a little trickier because how do you how do you show these um, plant symbols in there? So if I go over to my model space, uh, I would have to. There's so many. There's like six levels in this planter. Am I going to place six plants? right on top of each other. Graphically, it does, just doesn't make sense in plan view and it all gets jumbled together. So what we'd have to do is I'll show you the end result we're going for and then I'll show you how to get there. We're going for something like this where we are actually designing our planter uh, as an elevation. And I decided to show these symbols as diagrammatic symbols because I thought I um, I decided it was easier to read this way. 
especially in a detail situation and uh, connecting it to a schedule. But you'll want to create different schedules for each of these wall sections. So if you're doing a retaining wall, you would probably do a detail of the whole uh, linear section of wall if you can fit it all in one detail and go across and then connect this detail uh, to your to your plan like I have over, shown over here so that people can then refer to it for the additional planting over there. So that's how we are going to graphically show all of this so that it's easy for somebody to take these plans and get this built and then we're going to go into irrigation. Let's go to model space and let's start. So obviously the very first step that you're going to do is you're going to um, make these blocks that you're going to show in your plan. So what I did was I actually went to a manufacturer's website and I grabbed the block from there. If you're doing more of a DIY sort of setup, um, maybe with uh, geocloth or um or sorry geogrid over it you might need to uh do more of a manual drafting exercise on this elevation uh but in this case i was just able to pull a block from their website i uh, i'll show you right here some examples so while i'm here oh here while i'm here um this is the filtrex webinar that uh, we had before that guest webinar, if you need to go find it in our uh, videos under resources, videos, webinars, and you can find that under guest speakers. You can also find that rooftop irrigation power tip. That's what it looks like. But I found uh, for these two manufacturers, I just went on to their website and you can find detail sheets and CAD models. Uh, and some some of the manufacturers have SketchUp models as well. Uh, so I grabbed some of these that worked with the design that I was going to do, picked the right type of planter and downloaded the DWG from their website. Uh, once I got it, I actually cleaned it up a bit, put it on, it, it all came on layer zero. Uh, so I, uh, if I just copy this off to the side, I can show you what it looks like. And I'll explode it. I grabbed all of their line work, put it on appropriate block layers so that I could gray out uh, this layer in particular so it didn't uh, plot as black or I could at least change the layer type. So I made them all color by layer. Um, and I actually, because I'm going to do some things with elevation today, I added a few non plot um, dimension lines in here. So they're on a non plot layer. And they are actually in, um, they were done with the land effects uh, site dimension tool. And then I exploded them so that when I save the block, uh, they stay the same size because it didn't matter since they don't plot, but I wanted them to stay that nice small size, no matter what drawing I place them in. And with all of this line work, I went to the our blocks tools here in FX site, drop that down. And ideally I wanna get this block into our elevation graphics. So I went to save block and I picked an insertion point. I want to snap using F3. I snap down to this bottom point right there and select all of the objects and right click to accept that. And then for this elevation graphic under my blocks folder, I went to elevation graphics and I decided that this fit the best under site structures. And I created a living wall folder. So you just click new folder and living wall. Make sure that if you have any spaces uh, that they are represented by an underscore in this folder name. And I saved it right here with an appropriate DWG block name for this, uh, this wall type that I'm using. 
and I click save. I'm going to say yes, just so that I get through. And then I gave it a good description. I can give it a little bit more description here. Uh, live wall. It's a standard size. And this one in particular, I went with the side irrigation. You're limited on your character. So standard size side irrigation. And then I went with one to one scale. And for my elevation graphic, I want uh, no rotation. And I made sure the units were correct. And I clicked OK. I'm going to cancel out of this uh, because I've already done all of this. And I did the same for, oh, and I'm going to undo what I did over there just because uh, the act of saving that actually redefined the block and I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to control Z, 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 Z. There we go. Uh, so I ended up with this block right here that I can go through and place with elevation graphics. And I can find it right here under site structures, under living wall, And it didn't grab, oh, because I resaved it. It's normally um, right in here. I should have canceled out a little sooner so I didn't wreck what I had already saved. Um, so uh, it's normally here. I can choose it if I assign it to a reference note or anything like that. But I'm going to cancel. And I did the same thing, but with a plan graphic uh, block. So under site structures, I made a living wall folder. And I saved in this block right here. That's what it ends up ends up looking like. Uh, so that this plan graphic I can assign to a reference note, reference that to a detail, all of that. So I'm going to cancel. And we're going to continue on with this. So I placed the plan blocks. If I go down here, I actually did a reference note. I'm going to delete these and show you how I got those in there. So I went to reference note just so I can count up how many planters I'm actually doing. I created an amenity and clicked new and went with generic and did site structures, grabbed my living wall and said OK and filled it all out with all of this information, gave it an appropriate number, uh, but you can see it's already assigned to this symbol. And I actually set a detail. Let me look, show you what that all looks like. If I click on this one that I already made and click edit, you can see everything that I set that to on this one. So I drafted up this plan view block myself just by looking at the elevation. I just drew some simple rectangles because that's all I really need to represent on my plan drawing. So I grab that one and I place it. And I'm just going to orient it to the wall, but it should probably be a lot closer than I have it. So I'm just going to pop it a little closer. And then I used my copy along tools. Just copy that right along that polyline. Oh, copy the block. Click the block first and then click the polyline. And I'm tapping one. And I'm going to increase that spacing to maybe eight feet between them. Exact. They're about six, uh, six and three quarter foot wide. So you can kind of fit four in here, but I decided to go with three in this example. So I just place those along. So uh, now that's linked into any reference note that I have, reference notes that I have in this. And it's also that one was linked to, I linked it to the detail um, of the actual section for this wall that you can get from the manufacturer or you make yourself. OK. So now let's get to this part. So I grab my elevation block that I save in and I placed it across 
three times. And I placed it off to the side. Now, an important consideration um, right off the bat before we get, uh, you'll, you'll see why this is important later on, uh, but I need to eventually number these and keep track of them. So this is my, um, this is my number two wall. This is my number three wall because I'm going to need to keep track of all of these as I go along with schedules and detail names and call outs and everything. So really, I don't want to have uh, 10 walls in here and have uh, them all jumbled all over the place. I want to organize them sequentially down here. And I also want to leave enough space between the blocks that I can put the detail boundary that I eventually want to place around it and fit a schedule inside of it on my planting plan. So those are some considerations to take into account. Then what I did, um, the next thing is we want to start planting this up. So I'm going to go to my FX planting ribbon. And I'm going to go to my shrubs division, my shrubs category for my plant manager. And I know that some of the things in here might not be uh, considered shrubs, but that's okay because I have groups uh, that I can pull from instead. So in this case, I have, uh, I made my own living wall group down here, but you can make more groups. You can make a grasses group. You can make a perennials. You can make an edible plants group if you want to differentiate in your schedule all of the different groups. You can see in this case, all of these plants that are in on my living wall group all organize themselves under a living wall uh, plant group in the schedule. So that's how you can organize these. So I can go ahead, I've added a few in here. I can go ahead, maybe I wanted to add a, a grass, maybe more of that, like a purple moor grass or something like that. Uh, I can go and click new and this is new. <laughs> this was just released yesterday. So definitely update if you haven't yet. And uh, so you can grab this new ad planter. It's great for searching as well as searching by filters. And I can actually click around here and it will change and I can just keep adding plants all at once uh, in here. It's actually really powerful and so awesome. Uh, we've been very excited about it. But I can go in here and search. Uh, I want to find that purple moor grass and I'm going to search. And I can search by genus, common or full name. Uh, I should be able to uh, grab it just in here. There we go. There it is. Uh, I have a few options. I'm going to grab, uh, we'll grab more flam. I like it. Uh, I'll grab that one and I will add that to the project. And that will be fixed before you guys get a hold of it. But it, I did see that it added to the project. So let's have a look at it. I think, uh, where did it add as? Should be the only thing not with a size because I added it new. Did it actually get added somewhere else? Let me try that one more time. Looks like you might want to switch to the uh, the legacy dialog because I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay, let's do it. Uh, it needs to be ten ten. Ten ten. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, let's grab that over here, add that to the project and click done. 
Awesome. So it's right here. I'm going to edit that. And so here's some things you want to put in here. So obviously you want to pick a, an appropriate symbol width for this. So I'm just going to put it at about one foot uh, spread. It might be about 1.5, uh, but I also want to set the size. This is going to be important for the irrigation later. And then I want to set a symbol, a 2D symbol. You can set color in 3D if you want. I'm going to go with diagrammatic symbols. I really like them. I also found, especially if you're going to be doing irrigation, showing irrigation on here, it's ideal that you don't pick the ones with solid inside because it gets hard to see emitters. Um, that's, that's your choice though. So I'm going to go with something I haven't chosen yet uh, and go with something like this with a cross in the middle. I haven't chosen that one yet. And say OK. And then I can grab that and place it. And we've got this plan view representation on this elevation. And that's how I kind of figured this would be best to represent. You can go through and maybe even take some of our elevation plant graphics and save them as plan graphics in order to uh, plan um, symbols for plants if you really want that kind of style in here to count up. I think this is the easiest for anybody to read who needs to actually build this. So that's why I chose this. So now what I can do um, is copy this across. And so I considered on some styles array might be best, but in this particular style, it's not a perfectly even spacing or it is an even spacing, but they're, they're more far apart uh, than array would give us. So I just went with a, a good old copy along a line F8 to snap to ortho, and then I used my uh, control keys, my keyboard commands, and I'm tapping A uh, to change the spacing in. And actually, I'm going to tap one and go for best fit instead. There we go. And I'm visually looking to make sure that they line up appropriately with these pots because obviously you don't want to plant to land in between two of these pots. You're going to click this down and then I'm just going to grab these. I'm going to use my X copy. I'm going to snap up here and we're going to go down. So one, two, three, for five copies, just like that. Probably you don't want the whole thing to be grass though of one type. That would be a very boring vertical wall uh, or vertical planter. So in this case, I have multiple different ones. Here's a really easy method to do that. I'm just gonna borrow from one of these. So you go through and um, I'm gonna grab this one and actually edit it and put it in with the living wall group and say OK. So you can place one of these down and put it beside. Just like let's go with some excellent. That and I'm going to go up here to match plant, match plant properties, click it. And I'm just going to go through and kind of switch up some of these. Uh, in a nice pleasing manner, kind of going through, keeping some species together. I'm going to actually just uh, match and grab one of these so that we link between walls. Maybe I, so I'm just going through, clicking a few plants. If you have uh, big walls, you might wanna kind of click and then grab a whole bunch maybe like that. But go through and obviously this design part is up to you. I'm going to continue focusing on the method though of how to get to the end result. So now I want to create a detail because I can't, I, I need to show this on my layout space and uh, it's going to look funny just all lined up right here. So I want to link it to a detail that I can call out on my plan 
um, my plan view. So I'm going to go over to my details. I'm going to close this for now. Details. I'm going to drop this down and get insert detail viewport. If you don't see this button here, uh, here's the command FX detail viewport. So you can get it right away. But if you don't see this uh, button here, you need the latest ribbons. So we just put out a power tip on how to make sure you have the latest ribbons and how to get them. Uh, definitely look at that if you don't see this button. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to give it an appropriate title, living wall section. And this is number one. And I'm going to give it a um, scale. I found three quarter inch for this example in particular. But I can use, I can keep using my keyboard command hotkeys. If I tap K, you can see what those are that I'm going to be using. But basically, I can tap D to make it double wide, like this one, instead of single wide. Uh, if you need to scale up or down, E for up, Q for down. And I'm just going to line it up similar to how I've had uh, all of these. There we go. Place that down. It creates that detail. And that detail is actually ready to place. So I can even, before I do anything else, I can go and place it. I'm actually going to run this schedule first, though. So I'm going to go back to my planting. And now that I have this viewport around here, um, I do actually want to run a schedule. But I need a work area around the detail viewport to make sure the schedule goes to a, the scale, same scale as the viewport as well as make sure that it only is a schedule of the plants inside this detail. So I'm going to go to new work area. I'm going to call this uh, live wall space one. I'm going to make sure the plot scale is the same as my detail. I'm going to say OK and OK. And we're going to pop that down in here doesn't matter what shape this is, but I'm going to grab this and kind of put it over here so I can see what all of them are. Oh, it wants to snap. F3 to turn off snap. There we go. So I've got all my walls and details and viewports all lined up here, nice and organized. I can run a schedule. And for this, um, in this section, because I'm only using shrubs, I want to unclick everything else. I only want to show symbols in this case, for my example. Uh, to save some space, I put botanical and common in the same column. I unchecked all the details because I don't really need them in this case, and I unchecked remarks. Um, I had a look at having symbols at plan size, but I want I decided I wanted to save space uh, instead of have them as big as they are in the plan. So I'm going to go ahead with that and click OK. Select this work area. It's asking me to select a work area because I have them in my drawing. And click that down. There we go. I only have three plants in here, and here's all of the quantities. Everything's spelled correctly. The size is all here. All good. It's a block, so I can kind of move it around if it's a little close to the edge. And that is good to go. Now I can actually place this detail on my detail sheet. So if I go up here to my detail sheet, I left a little space right here for section one. And I'm going to go to my FX details. I'm going to open up my manager. And when I created that detail viewport, it created this view number for this detail. So I can go click that and place. And yep, I'm going to go with detail number six. We have a lot of webinars on how to place details. If you need some help with that, how to create them. Uh, I'm going to undo my snaps. There we go. And there, it's in here. Everything's scaled correctly. It's all the same scale um, for the most part as all the sizes I have in my other details, although the text for schedules is a little bigger than my detail text style. But that's ready to go. And it's very clear. Um, 
lots of opportunity there. But let's move on to irrigation. So I also want to irrigate this. So what I've done is created an irrigation plan with my planting plan XREF into it. And I turned all the layers gray just so it's really clear. Uh, oh, I'm going to save this so that I can see what I've done in my irrigation plan. And we're, I'm going to go to my external references and I'm just going to reload that one so I can see that new detail over here. Okay, let's go through this workflow. So the first thing you're going to want to do, I'm going to go through this a little quickly and we can cover, if you want me to cover anything again, we can do that during question time. So um, first I'm going to open up my irrig irrigation manager on my irrigation ribbon. And you're going to want to add some drip equipment. I went with, with Rainbird, but uh, you can choose whatever equipment you want here. Maybe the um, manufacturer of the style of planter you're using has a recommendation on what they suggest on what, like this one in particular, uh, the lines clip to the top. So uh, they might need a particular style or they might be open. I didn't actually look that deep into this uh, planter, but ask the manufacturer rep of the one that you are using. So I went with um, just a regular drip emitter here. And I wanted to show a few different styles. And I'll show you how I got to the end here. I'll just delete that. But uh, there's two different methods of doing this. You can place an emitter for each plant. Or you can, if all of the plants are the same size and generally just need the same emitter, you can actually do a drip emitter area, an area for drip emitters, and it should pick up all of the plants in your planting plan behind here and actually come out with exactly the same uh, number of emitters, the ex exact same pressure and uh, flow for both of these. So if I go, if you look at that one and then I look at this one, it's exactly the same. So depending on what you need to do, choose whichever method makes sense for you. Uh, if you want your final irrigation, I've only showed one row for right here just to get my flows and pressure. But if you want a final one, uh, a final irrigation schedule, you'll probably need to copy these all the way down so that you populate the final quantity of emitters and pipe in your final irrigation schedule. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to delete these so that they're not here. And I'll show you how I got here. And it's uh, like I said, it's a lot like that um, rooftop irrigation webinar. So I'm going to show you with the area for drip emitters. So what I'm going to do is place this area. I'm just going to tap D for draw. And I am going to snap F3 to in here. And your area for drip emitters just needs to pick up the insertion point of these plants. And your irrigation plan and your planting plan both need to be on the same project for this to work. OK, with that placed, I added a irrigation nozzle for, or an, sorry, a drip valve uh, to match that would handle the, the flows for this area. So I'm going to go ahead and place a temporary valve beside this pretty much in line with where it's going to clip actually on the planter itself. So if it goes along the bottom and kind of irrigates from the bottom of the planter, uh, or if it goes right at the bottom of the planter, or if it clips to the top overhang, that's where you want to put this um, line. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw some laterals. Now for my uh, pipe data, I did add an additional uh, pipe type for my uh, emitters. So I'm going to draw a lateral from that valve. And I'm going to draw it straight across using F8 for ortho about to here. And I'm going to make sure I tap 9 so it switches to that drip emitter type of pipe. And I'm going to click it down and right click. And then with that placed, 
I'm going to go ahead and size this. So I'm going to size the pipe for that temporary valve. I'm going to accept this and just go OK. It's going to size that pipe, but importantly, I'm going to label this valve. The number doesn't matter. Now I can run a schedule, a valve schedule. I'm going to check off everything. I'm going to choose this work area that I placed around here so that it's all at this right scale for me. And I'm going to place down this valve schedule. And importantly, I just got the uh, flow and pressure for that valve for that row in particular. Now here's where it gets where we start to take into account the um, pressure loss for an elevation gain, right? Because uh, with this, you you have that uh, 0 0.433 pounds per foot of uh, pressure gain for this wall. And this happens to be like a, a six foot high wall, but for say a 10 foot high wall, even for the six foot high wall, but you're, if you go 10 feet, 20 feet, that is significant. And I'll show you how significant. So if uh, I take that and I put that into a cap, so auxiliary equipment, I added a cap for future use. Watch that power tip if you want to see how to set this up. Uh, although I did make sure to use this symbol that allows me to put um, an identifier on this cap. I'm going to place that right here. And I'm going to cancel out of this and do it again because I forgot the flow. <laughs> what do we got here? We got um, 0 0.2134.4. OK, let's 2134.4. Let's place that at that elevation roughly. Uh, it doesn't totally matter. Identifier, this is going to be uh, number six. But I'm going to call it 1.6 because it's all in wall one. There we go. And what I can do is actually just go ahead and since all of these rows are the same, I'm going to copy this down. But if you have any other rows, you need to do this process again for any rows that are going to be different. And maybe you have like different plants on different rows that need different drip emitters. Uh, this process can get a little bit more complicated as you go along. but I'm just showing the really simple method. Okay, so I want that. I'm using my X copy to then copy this to the same point on each planter. And this is so that I can get all of that elevation gain uh, variables for each level. So I'm gonna go in here and this one would be it's exactly the same except for the identifier. So this is number five. This is number four. Three. Two. one. And then um, I delete that temporary valve. I'm going to place another temporary valve down here at the bottom. And I'm going to start placing spot elevation. So under here under label, we added spot elevation in the new ribbons. I'm going to add a spot elevation up here. And uh, so this one I'm going to put at six feet. I measured it out. It's actually, it is six feet. That's how these measurements are really handy. So uh, to help you figure out where that elevation is. 
And I can keep placing spot elevations, but I'm actually going to cheat again. <laughs> and I am just going to go ahead and pop this down like that. And I need one down here for my valve as well. And I'm going to go in and manually just edit them. So that one's zero. You need that zero elevation because otherwise all of the, so what's going to happen is uh, as I size this temporary valve to get the pressure and flow for all of this wall, uh, each cap and each, and the final valve are going to take uh, the elevation from the spot elevation closest to them. So that means I need that zero elevation so that the valve is at zero. And these elevations have nothing to do with uh, your actual site elevation. This is all respective of the bottom of the wall. You can add site elevations on your site plan uh, for calculating even further elevation changes there. This is really just for the for the wall. So the bottom of your wall is always going to be zero. So now I'm going to pipe this. I'm going to choose uh, my regular pipe for this one. And I'm going to tap H to pick up all of these heads, all of these caps, and then finally connect it to the valve and right click to end. I'm going to size this valve. Say OK. That size, I'm going to label it valve call out. And the number again still doesn't matter. But now I can run a new valve schedule on this work area for just that valve. And I get the entire, uh, sorry, the entire flow and the entire pressure uh, for the whole thing, except I made one mistake. Uh, and maybe you've already caught the mistake I did. This is actually the PSI uh, and flow for no spot elevations, because when I size this, I did not size it for spot elevations. So let's fix that. So I'm going to go in here and size this again. I'm going to select that valve. And I got to check this, use spot elevations. It's picking up that six feet. So I'm going to say, OK. Perfect. I'm going to label that again. I could have updated my call out, but I just wanted to be really quick about it right now. And I am going to regenerate just this schedule. And you can actually see that difference in the pressure uh, needed in order to hit that top elevation gain. OK, let's delete that. Let's delete that. And I can take all of this uh, 41.08 and 1 1.2, 41, uh, 41.08. And I can create caps over here. One point two, forty one point oh eight, and this is number one for wall one. Let's copy that using X copy and just copy it over for all of these walls. And since they're all exactly the same in our example, I'm just going to change the identifier. And then I can go ahead and pipe all of this. So I can go and uh, grab my main line from my water source. And I'm just doing it roughly for now to save some time. And I'm going to pipe my laterals. Obviously, you'd have a whole irrigation system here. You might, um, I found that with uh, the amount of um, flow and pressure needed, I could probably put them all on one valve. I'm going to size this. So I'm going to size this valve first. Say OK.
did not connect. Maybe it didn't catch it. Size valve. Oh, I, it didn't actually connect. I was loosey goosey on the clicking. There we go. And go ahead and size my main line. And that can all size. And I can review my critical analysis, see uh, that I am still well within my pressure available. Uh, might be even, I don't think I, I think three is all the uh, walls I can add. So if I were to add a fourth wall, I'd probably need to add another valve and pipe that one as well. So that is the technique for all of this, guys. How to create those details, show that on a detail page, how to actually use the caps and the elevations and the temporary valves to finally get your pressure needed to, uh, to put onto your site plan. And I know we're right at the hour mark. Um, I don't know if there were any questions that we wanted to get to, uh, Jer. Um, no, I, I don't have any that we need. If anyone did um, have one, they can type super quick. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to start saying goodbye. <laughs> and, uh, um, but I think this was super fun and fantastic. I hope everyone agreed. A reminder, it was recorded. It'll be up on the website later today. And uh, like Amanda mentioned, this came in from uh, actually multiple, you know, tech support requests, you know, mm -hmm. people asking how to do this. So reminder, uh, you know, let us know little design challenges you're having. We love framing a, a webinar around that. Um, other than that, hey, everyone have a safe and wonderful and happy, fantastic weekend. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye.